Today, in this video, I will be showing you how to make some common fixes for some common symptoms for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Some of the symptoms we'll be going over in this video is blinking red light, black screen, no sound, glitchy screen. The first one we're going to go over is the blinking red light and replacing the 72 pin connector. The first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to flip over your console and remove the six screws that are on the back. Once that is done, you should just be able to take off the cover completely. Now once that is done, you're going to want to remove the screws keeping the heat shield attached. Once that is done, it should slide right off. You might have to angle a bit just to get it out. Take out all the screws on the cartridge tray. There are two long screws, which should be the silver ones, as you see there. Make sure that you try to keep them separate, as you might get them confused. And always remember that they are the ones in the middle. There are just four regular screws keeping the rest of it held together. Once that is done, you're going to want to pull the cartridge tray off. This might be a little hard as it is kind of underneath the main board. It took me a while here just because I didn't want to break it. Once that is off, you're going to want to replace the 72 pin connector, but there's stuff that you also need to do before that. You're going to want to remove the two screws keeping that box that is attached to the main board off. You're going to want to remove those two screws there. The one closest to the right side is the hardest. As you saw, I had to use some pliers to get them out. Now, after you're done with this, you're going to want to take out all of these. I haven't done this in a while, so I was trying to pull by the plastic but you actually want to be pulling by the wires. It's going to be hard because I know that you probably don't want to rip them, but that's what you have to do. That took me a while, so I just did that quick cut there. Once that is done, you're going to remove the bottom heat shield and pull off the old 72 pin connector, as you can see there. It might be a little tough as if you've bought this um, broken, uh, that it might not have been touched for a couple, like a couple decades, I'd say. So it might be a little tough to get off. It took me a while here because I didn't want to break the board, but it, once it gets to a certain point, it just really slides off. One thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to clean the... Um, receptors on the board with a little bit of alcohol and a q-tip you're going to want to make sure that you get the both sides of the board then you want to grab your new 72 pin connector which you can buy for fairly cheap singly by themselves but together they're a lot and the new ones haven't really been moved a lot or been used so they're going to be a little tough to get on it took me a while here but you are going to have to use some force when making some of these fixes, even though you might think that it will break, but it might not. Now that you have that connected, we're going to clip pin 4 on the lockout chip, which is located right above that silver box. Uh, it should just pop right out if you can get something behind it, or you can clip it entirely, but just make sure that they are completely separate so that they cannot be touched anymore. Another thing we're going to want to do is to replace the capacitors. Um, we didn't have a new capacitor kit with us, but there are three on the one side of the board, and on the other side of the board, there is that one big one, and there are actually two inside of that box right there. Uh, one thing you can do is remove the soldering right there, take off the box completely, and replace it by just pulling off one of those metal lids. 
and that's what you would have to do to get in there, or you can just cut the metal around it. Uh, this is a place that you can get a new capacitor kit. The link to that will be in the description. Next, what you want to do is visually check the board for cracks and corrosion. Um, using the digital multimeter you saw there, so you're going to want to obviously check your board and take the red and black, put them on two different matching points, and go. Okay, so for this next symptom, which would be no sound, you would have to wire it directly to the board. Uh, I used, the example I'm showing you now is the board that I had used when I had first done this. Uh, you're going to want to split the wires and attach them there, draw them all the way across, and make sure that it is on the furthest left one right there. And make sure that you solder it down good. So the connection as well, and the sound should work. And this is me putting the board back into the um, bottom portion of the console. Screwing all the screws back in, and making sure it's nice and tight. Now, the next symptom would be having a glitchy screen, and for this, you really just have to move the cartridge back and forth. As you see here, it doesn't work, blinking light, and then if you just take your finger and put it right into that little space there, move it back and forth a little bit, then it should be working. Uh, some good practices would be to blow on the cartridge to get all the dust out. What you're going to want to do is just take your cartridge and blow into the bottom portion right there. Another thing you can do is clean it with a Q-tip and alcohol. You just take it and do the top side and then you do the underside. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope it was very helpful and I hope you can enjoy a nice fixed NES.